Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Yo, what's up? It's Dave. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. Today, I am thrilled to have my friend and special guest, Bethany Clemenson, joining us. And we go into a wonderful conversation on her book, Ditching the Dream, How to Live Life on Your Terms. One of the things I love about Bethany and her story and her family's story is that she's just not out there pontificating and theorizing on a way to live a big life. Her and her family have done some amazing things, taken some amazing action, and you'll hear in our conversation that all of that is true. And that's why I brought her on Unleash the Awesome, because she is certainly unleashing the awesome herself and with her own family and with her career and business choices. And I know that you can learn a lot from her and learn a lot from her book. I highly recommend you go get a copy of Ditching the Dream. I'll make sure there's links in the show notes for you, and you can even read a free chapter. I'll make sure that link is available for you as well. But without further ado, let's jump into my conversation with my friend, Bethany Clemenson. Hey, Bethany, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I am fantastic. Excited to be here, talked with you today. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, it has. And I'm excited too. I, you know, a couple of weeks or months ago, and I was like, hey, do you want to come to my podcast and talk about your book? It was like, wait, first of all, Bethany's writing a book. And second of all, I'm asking her to come on my podcast. Like, this is pretty cool because many of the people that I've had on the podcast are like people that I've known from afar and I've got to know them through our business ventures or through partnerships or whatever, but you're kind of on the other side of it where I, we met at a leadership event years ago and mm-hmm. that's really what we had in common. And, and I guess my role was to, you know, I'd been in this organization for a while. So it's like to help people navigate this event we were at, cause there was thousands of people there and they didn't want people to kind of get lost in there. And so I, I met you right at a time where you were doing a lot of the stuff that you talk about in the book, a lot of amazing stuff that you talk about in your book, Ditching the Dream, How to Live Life on Your Terms, which we're going to dig into a ton here. But um, I just want to share that with the audience. Like this, this is, has been really cool because I've been able to watch your growth in this space and watch you just take off and and do some amazing things because you're actually doing the things that I talk about a lot on this podcast or in my Mm -hmm. Facebook group or whatever, like you were out there getting it done. So the first thing I wanted to say was congratulations and way to just be in the game and make stuff happen. Well, thank you so much. Who knew when we met years ago that years later, we'd still be friends and that we'd be doing this. Um, You've been an integral part of my journey. I've learned so much from you, from being part of your digital marketing mentorship group and other programs that you've had. And I trust you. And I know that you don't just share things um, because you're getting an affiliate kickback for it, that you only share things that you've tried, that you trust, and um, that have been beneficial for you. So and it's it's been so much fun to watch your growth too. I've seen you explode and expand and your impact be far and wide reaching in ways that I'm, maybe you anticipated, but I didn't see coming. It's like every time I turn, there's more people and different people that you're meeting with and and partnering with. And it's amazing to see. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to be clear for people that were paying attention to what you just said there about I just don't promote things because I'm getting an affiliate commission or whatever. The same holds true for your book and having you on this podcast. To be brutally honest with people listening, I get requests all day, every day for people when they say, hey, can I come to your podcast? Can you read my book? Can you do a blurb or whatever? And I'm like, no, I don't know anything about you. I don't like, I don't know what's going on. I can't endorse it because I I don't, there's not a values match. I don't, I don't even know where to begin. So no, Mm -hmm. like I'll buy a copy of it or whatever. But when I saw you writing it, and that you're writing a book. First of all, I was like, wow, she's writing a book. Okay. Maybe I should get on it and start writing my book. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, that's amazing. That's so cool. And when you said, Hey, you know, if this is coming out, we support it. I was like, of course I will, because a lot of our values are in alignment. And after reading through the book and hearing all the stories that I hadn't heard from you previously about how that shaped you, it's, it's been really amazing. So before we get into the book though, what made you 
decide it was time to write a book or, or why now? Because I've seen you do a lot of stuff on Clubhouse and uh, through your podcast and some other venues, but why, why a book and why now? Hmm. You know, it was a long time coming. It may seem like it was just now, like, oh, look, here, I wrote a book. But uh, it, the stories for the book and the premise of the book were on a giant sticky note on my wall before we sold our house in Iowa. So um, I had started then. And because I just, I felt like it was a great way to connect with people that I wouldn't be able to connect with otherwise. I know. I've scrolled through Amazon, either in the Kindle app or just Amazon in general. And I bought books when I was looking for something that I needed and I didn't know the authors. And I just thought it would be another way to reach people, but I had no idea how to put it together. So on, um, on our travels, which I'm sure we'll touch on, I added to the stories. I had the giant sticky note with us the whole time. And then I moved it when we moved to Wisconsin. And then I was really stuck. I had all of these stories, all of these ideas, but I didn't know how to put them together. And I think it's just amazing how um, when you are really conscious about what I call doing the work, right? You're putting yourself out there. You don't give up. You're intentional about who you surround yourself with, that things just fall into place. It doesn't mean they're easy. And none of this, I mean, very little of this is easy, but things do fall into place and the next steps appear. And there was a woman that I interviewed because I found her book on Amazon um, for a uh, for a speaker series that I did online during COVID. And she ended up becoming my book coach and she's phenomenal. And so she spent 12 weeks with me. We wrote the book in 12 weeks because I had the stories there. She just frameworked it with me asked me the right questions, put it together. And I did the writing and then helped me with the editing process. And she owns a publishing house. So she was my publisher as well. And it's, you know, again, you wouldn't think looking back that it would all fall together like that, but she helped it come to life. So. Thank you for sharing that. And I want to make sure people heard what you said there about, you know, when you get in the arena, you know, the famous man in the arena speech or woman mm -hmm. in the arena you know, when you get in the arena and do the stuff, like things just tend to quote happen or come out of the blue for you. And as I was watching you over the last couple of years, do stuff, you mentioned a couple online summits that you've done your podcast, uh, clubhouse, Facebook lives, Facebook groups, challenges, like I've been watching you do all these things. And I guess one of the things I want to make sure people listening pay attention to is this didn't happen because you just sat around and thought about like, let's make it happen. It happened mm -hmm. because you were doing things and it wasn't necessarily writing the book, but you were doing other things. And that was creating chapters of your book. And you knew mm -hmm. for a while that maybe you were going to write a book and that through the doing that was creating chapters for your book. And then the timing just happened to work out where it made sense to do it now. Cause you met the right people at the right time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, a lot of people will say, well, you're lucky you found, you know, you found a person to help you do this. And I'll say, well, yeah, but you can create your own luck, right? I believe that the definition of luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yes. And I think you were preparing your entire life for this moment. And then the opportunity came about and you said yes to it, which I think is critical, right? You were, you were ready to say yes. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anyone that we see out there, uh, you know, driving success or having success, it's not that they're lucky or they have a better life or their circumstances are magical. Um, you just, you don't give up. You, you keep going, you keep trying different things and you decide what everything that happens to you means. And I think that's a huge critical piece for success. You derive the meaning of everything that happens in your life. And, and so noticing that and being able to choose how you move forward and based on what you make things mean is a really big deal. Yes, I agree. And that's a great segue into your book, Ditching the Dream, How to Live Life on Your Own Terms. Mm -hmm. And I love how you have it broken down into three major categories. The first one is get clear. And as you were talking about that, I was thinking about two chapters in particular about the power of programming and then examining the lens through which you see the world. And, and I think those are critical. So I don't know if you want to jump into those a little bit. Um, you just kind of hinted at it around, you know, you get to decide 
how you see things or how you want to interpret things. But when we first get started, that's not the case because we have so many years Mm. of programming Mm -hmm. from well-intentioned people. But unless you've done some evaluation of that programming, you won't get the clarity you need to move forward. And and I love that you covered that specifically in those two chapters, but in that whole section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's hard to live a life on your terms, have fulfillment, not lay in bed at night asking yourself, is this all there is, right? It's it's hard to do those things if you aren't really clear about what it is that you want. And I know for me, for years, I just looked to the left and looked to the right and asked everybody else, am I okay? Are you happy with me? Am I pleasing you? Is this the right thing? Do you think I'm doing all right? And instead of looking straight ahead and trusting myself and asking myself those questions, what do I want? Am I okay with me? What do I like? And then knowing that disappointing everybody else is okay. I think the key is not disappointing yourself. And that's so not my original thought. I heard that first from from, um, Glennon Doyle and it stuck with me because she told her daughter, your job is when faced with a decision to disappoint yourself or disappoint others, always disappoint others. Don't ever disappoint yourself. And Um, that's been paramount in my parenting. And it's been a constant reminder for me to, to keep on track with what it is I want. I had a mentor pull me aside a few years ago and say, don't write a book. That's stupid. There's too many books out there. You don't want to write a book. And uh, I was deterred and discouraged for a while. And what I've learned is You've got to really know who you are and be true to that. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. I I um I had a a friend say to me a few months ago, "You were doing so good. You were doing so good. I saw all your consistent posts about this certain thing, and then all of a sudden you started posting about something different. And I just thought, Bethany, stick to one thing. And I'm sorry to disappoint that friend, (laughs) but I am not a stick to one thing kind of person. It's, it's all kinds of things. I, I, I'm a nurse, I'm a mom, I'm a coach, I'm a speaker, and it's okay. Now I'm an author, it, it's okay for me to be all of those things. And you know what? If you're a multi-passionate person, it's okay for you to be all those things too. And if you're not, it's okay for you to be the one thing too. Be who you are. I love that. It ma- makes me think of, you know, the people who always will get a vanilla ice cream or no toppings on their pizza, you know, just a plain pizza. And mm-hmm. if that's what you like and that's what you want to do, that's great. But for me, and it sounds like for you, every now and then you might want to throw some pepperoni on there or get right. a, a white pizza with broccoli or whatever. Like you want to mix it up some. And I, I love how you said multi-passionate because I think that's where a lot of people get stuck in this space, this creator space, this online marketing space, you know, creating a course, whatever it may be like people get this idea that, okay, I've gone down this one path and this just is the path that I have to continue down. So this is what I'm going to do. And to your point, this is what everyone else is doing. And this is what everyone else expects of me and whatever. Mm-hmm. And for people like you and the other people that I've seen that have been successful, it's actually when they decide to do something that they're more passionate about that might not seem outwardly successful, you know, like maybe they're a leadership trainer, a coach or something, but they really want to teach people how to do knitting or crochet or something Mm -hmm. because they're passionate about it. And then they get into that and they start talking about that and doing it online. And then they create a six figure business, which seems like it just comes out of nowhere, but no, it's like they've taken all this effort and energy and decided to your point, they they're okay. Disappointing the other people who said, you know, you should be a leadership coach or whatever. And, and they were okay with doing this thing. And then look what happened. And they, explode this business and they love what they're doing, which I think is also key. And I see that a lot in you. You seem to love what you're doing now because you have figured out, I guess, the path that the right path for you to walk. Mm -hmm. Right. My way, my way. And it doesn't have to be anybody else's way. I just have, uh, I have a client that I'm currently working with and she just gave her notice at an accounting job where she's been at for years but it's sucking the life out of her and it doesn't. And so she first had to come to terms with being okay with that, right? That it was okay for her to recognize that it wasn't giving her life anymore. And then she, as soon as she did that, all of these doors to possibility started opening and she started seeing things that she'd never seen before that were potential opportunities for her. 
And she just messaged me a week and a half ago and said, I created three journals and they're on sale on Amazon and I'm making money. And she did it in a week and a half and she couldn't be more excited about it. And I was I just blown away at her passion and going after it. And it was easy for her. It was easy for her to do that. And so absolutely all of that is amazing. And I think we all have those things inside of us that light us up, but sometimes we're like, no, you better be realistic. You know, you've got to be responsible and our dreams aren't always realistic and responsible. They're just not. I love that. That will become a tweetable moment right there. Our dreams are not always realistic and responsible. Bethany (laughs) Clementson. Maybe I'll make a photo quote when we're done here and post it online. (laughs) Um, Thank you for sharing that. And and I think, and you talk about this in the book and I've done this exercise, a similar idea or exercise with people. I think one of the ways you get this clarity is you do what Stephen Covey talks about of beginning with the end in mind. And you, you hint at this in the first chapter. We don't hint at it. You actually take it head on this idea of like, you know, when you're 85 years old, a hundred years old, I think Jeff Bezos calls this his regret minimization framework. Mm. Um, You know, when you're sitting in a rocking chair and you're, you're talking to your grandkids or whatever at 85, Mm -hmm. 90 years old, and you're sharing about your life experiences and what you were doing, like, what are you going to say? And and I've done the exercise of writing my own obituary and saying like, what do I want that to say? And I do that Mm -hmm. a lot with my, my clients, which sounds kind of morbid, but the idea is how are you looking, you know, beginning with the end of mind and saying like, what kind of life do you want to create? And to your point of this whole first part of your book about getting clear, the only way you can get clear and, and do exactly what it is you want to do in your life is to create a map of where you want to go. And you have to figure out where you are and where you're headed. And then you can figure out the path that you want to take, but it's hard to choose a path or it's hard to be decisive about things like writing a book or quitting your accounting job to to put some journals on Amazon or whatever the case may be, if you don't begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And I love how you started the first chapter with that. And some of the conversations you had with your family about some misgivings they may have had about what they were doing and how you didn't want to have the same thing happen to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, the question, why am I doing this has been foundational to the beginning of my journey and my continued journey. I ask myself that at every turn. And, but then you have to get real about the answer. Am I doing this to please people? Am I doing this to look good? Am I doing this? Oh, wait, I slip back into my old habits or wait, no, I'm doing this for me. This is, and it's okay. And uh, that one question can be a complete game changer. If you pause long enough to be real with yourself about the answer. If you pause long enough, if you pause long enough, yeah, that's the hard part, right? Most people won't (laughs) slow down to just get quiet and listen to that. And myself included, I'm one of those people that just runs hundred miles an hour mm-hmm. and rarely take time to reflect. But I find that when I do, and I'm intentional about that, some of the best answers or solutions or ideas come from that. Um, and you just hinted at the second part of your book right there, where you mentioned get real, which is that the second main part of your book, right? So the first part is get clear, figure out you know what your current state is, what your current reality is, your ideal state, what you want to go to, and then kind of define the gap. And that's what the get real piece is about. It's like, okay, where are you? Where do you want to go? You know, for me, I know if I wanted to become a ballet dancer, um, that's probably not something that I would be able to do <laughs> <laughs> even with all the effort energy in the world. Like I just don't have the build for it. Right. Um, you know, I just wouldn't probably, I can barely touch my toes on a good day. So like, I would have to get real with myself and say, well, there might be some other things I could do in the ballet scene, but I don't think I'm going to be a, a ballet dancer. So you have to get some clarity around what it is. So like in a lot of cases, you know, you've heard this advice from people. I've heard it too, this idea of okay, so you got clear about what you want. Now let's just jump and build your wings on the way down, right? Or Mm. burn the boats, Cortez style, right? And there's a step in between there. I mean, you can maybe eventually do that once you line some stuff up, but you got to get some some clarity. And I like how you talked about the get real section and some of the stories you told in there about, okay, now that you have figured some of this out, like now what let's figure out like what's happening, what we can do, what we can't do. What's, what are some realistic things, maybe with some stretch goals, but what are some things that we can do to move towards this life that we have now created for ourselves? Absolutely. Uh, Getting real 
and taking responsibility for the part that you've played and where you're at is, is a really big deal. Uh, if you don't take responsibility for where you're at and ownership of that, then you, you're not going to be able to move. You're going to stay stuck. So um, getting, getting really clear and then getting real are, uh, I was trying to think of, of a story that, that I mentioned in the book, but really what's coming up for me is a conversation I had with my daughter last night. So I'm just going to share that quick because there's lots of stories in the book that, um, that play this out really clearly, but, um, I was sitting on the, on the couch with my daughter last night. And I said, let's have, let's have a real conversation about what you want to do. So she'll be 18 in September. And, uh, and she has three classes left of high school. And she's been talking about this idea of, uh, having a coffee trailer. She's a barista at a coffee shop. And she went through this whole, uh, entrepreneurial program where she designed a business plan from A to Z and she's been excited about it, but I could tell she wasn't like excited, excited about it. And so I said to her, you know, if you knew you wouldn't fail and you knew that you were supported and you knew that it was going to be amazing, what would you do? And she's like, well, but I need to make money, but I need to be responsible, but I need, I'm like, whoa, 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 okay, back out of your head. And I just want you to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. And she said, horses. And this girl has loved horses from the time she was in preschool. They brought a, a standard horse and then they brought ponies to her preschool class. And she was the only child that hopped on the big horse. And, and ever since then, she has been gaga about horses and she wants to find a way to do um, equine therapy basically with, with people. And, but she doesn't see the how. And so she's reverted back to, okay, let's be realistic here. I can see how to do a coffee truck. Okay. I could, you know, it, but she, it's not lighting her up. And so we had this huge conversation about, okay, you're getting in your own way. Let's get real about how you're getting in your own way. And then what, what's something you can do about it? What's the next step you can take? And so in the book, there are other stories that talk about that, but that's just one that came up for me in my life last night and being able to empower her uh, to see past her own self limits and, and to take a next step forward. And we have a plan. We're going to visit an equine therapy, um, whole, a stable in the next few weeks. And, uh, there's one about an hour and a half from us. And actually our neighbor has a direct connection to the owners and who knew, you know, it's like that one decision, having that one conversation and taking a one step can open up so many doors to possibility that you don't see because you're too busy living in the, well, I should be responsible. I should do what's logical, be realistic. And um, again, your dreams are not always realistic and responsible. So there's so much to unpack there. I'm sitting here <laughs> trying to listen attentively and then thinking of all these follow up questions as you're going through it. And uh, first of all, you know, our kids have no idea or other kids, I guess, have no idea what it's like to live with parents that use coaching on them. Right. So on some level, I know our kids are probably like, Oh, come on, dad, come on, mom. Like, stop asking me these questions. Like, don't do this, but it's such a valuable thing to be able mm -hmm. to just say like, no, let's, let's figure out really what you want to do. And what a great question to ask, like what really lights you up? And then horses, it's like, okay, well, what does that have to do with a coffee truck? Nothing. Mm -hmm. so let's, let's figure out this other path. And you said one of the most dangerous three letter words in there that stops people in their tracks. And that's how, you know, we've heard from people before about, you know, you have to detach yourself from the requirement of knowing how, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's, it's the who, not the how, right. So mm -hmm. you find other people. So to your point, you didn't even know how, when you were talking to your daughter about this, like, you're like, okay, well, it's, you know, you had some background understanding what equine therapy is with your nursing background, then you go, okay, let's figure this out. And you didn't know how either, but then right. all of a sudden quote, miraculously, right. Your neighbor just happens to know somebody that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And there, there's the right. whole thing, but it, it happens with the clarity, right. Mm -hmm. The decision let's do this. And then saying, okay, well, what, what's the path forward? And one, I love that story. And two, I love how in the book you have uh, what, what I liked about it was it wasn't in every chapter, but it was in a lot of chapters where you stopped and said like, here's a quick exercise, like do this or figure mm -hmm. this out. And mm -hmm. for some of it, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, Bethany, I've read these books before in these exercises. And I'm like, all right, no, wait, this is not going to be useful unless I stop and do it. <laughs> 
So let me stop and do it. Let me stop and walk through it. Let me stop and evaluate the words that you're using and the things that you're asking me to do. And, you know, a lot of times I was like, wow, okay, I have a new awareness or I solidified something that I kind of already knew, but I got much more clarity around it. And to your point, I got more real and that the idea became more real and I had more of a path forward. So if people are looking for not just the stories, because the stories are great. You are a masterful, masterful storyteller. I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, but the stories in there are great and they really like anchor the point. And then you would stop and say, okay, so like, here's your key takeaway. Here's something that you should do. So I want people to understand that it's very actionable as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned before, like I go hundred miles a minute and I'm always like, come on, come on, get to the point. Like stories used to like upset me where I would judge them. Like, come on, get on with it. Like, let's get to the point. But I love how you told the stories. They were just the right length. And then it's like, okay, here's your key takeaway. Do this exercise. And if people will take the time to do it, they will be able to get the clarity. They'll be able to get real about what it is they want to do and do stuff like you did. We haven't really brought this up. We've kind of hinted around it, but you at one point essentially sold all of your belongings or put them <laughs> in storage or some combination of both mm-hmm. and got a motor home where your kids were teenagers, I think, or somewhere mm-hmm. around that age. Mm-hmm. Right. And drove around the United States and essentially did like a real world history lesson for your kids, which was great visiting all these places. But like, I want people that are listening to know you're not just somebody that wrote this book and yeah, there's these stories in there and you do mention it in there, but I want people to know, like you have done this, you, you were doing these things, you are mm-hmm. creating your own future. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that experience of get, getting the motor home and, and doing all this stuff, which was right about the time when I met you, I think right when I yeah. met you, you were like, oh yeah, I don't have this thing. Cause it's all in storage. I'm like, why is all of your stuff in storage? And you're like, we're we're getting on a motor home next week. And like, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing from there. It was, it was something like that. It's like, yeah, right. I don't know where we're going or what we're doing. And I was like, yeah. what? This, that's crazy. So I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Sure. So it's interesting. I was uh, recently asked in an interview, what made me, you know, there's all these coaches out there. There's all these, you know, whatever, what makes you any different? And, um, and I said, well, you know, the people that are for me, that are meant for me will find me based on just who I am. So me being me, right. But I'm everything I talk about in the book I've lived. So this isn't, I just didn't go to, you know, I'm dual certified coach, blah, 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 whatever. But I didn't just go to coaching training and now I'm just regurgitating information. And believe me, I did that for a long time. I would read the books, go to the conferences. I could regurgitate all the quotes all day long. And on the outside of my life, it looked like I was killing it, but I was dying on the inside. And it wasn't until I got real that I was in my own way. And and I actually asked for help from a coach that my life began to change, which led my my family to changing too, because you can't have one cog in a wheel change and have it not impact all the other cogs, right? And and uh, so as I changed and I started to dream differently and look at life differently, my family did too. And we started growing and thinking differently. And I remember sitting down with the kids and just saying, you know, if you could do anything or travel anywhere, where would you want to go? And we put this list together again on a giant sticky note in our dining room in our house in Iowa. And um, Tom and I went, Tom is my husband. We went to a weekend retreat and it was really powerful. And you kind of came face to face with a lot of these things, Dave, that we're talking about. And on the way home, he looked at me and said, we've got to sell everything. Um, we've got it. We've got it. We had toyed around with the idea of traveling for a year, not really knowing um, what that looked like. And and then there was a, uh, there was a winter break that the kids were home with us and we were stuck at home because there was a lot of snow and we were like, yeah, this is crazy. No, we can't spend this much time together. What were we thinking? Right. And, and then about three weeks later, we were like, this is exactly why we have to do it. If we can't, we're, this is, you're supposed we're supposed to be each other's team, no matter what. I mean, at least that's how we feel in our family. Like we, we want our kids to know that we have their back. It doesn't mean that everything we, they do, we're going to agree with, but it does mean that we love them and support them no matter what. And, um, we just felt disconnected. And so uh, on the plane, on the way home, we decided we would ask the kids how they felt about going on a trip. And 
buying a motorhome or a fifth wheel or something. We didn't even know the differences in things at that point. We weren't campers. We weren't like the people that pulled their camper to the campground every weekend. I mean, that wasn't part of our life. Um, and we sat down with them and they both said we're in and they knew it was going to be leaving behind the, the only home they'd ever known. We'd been in the same town their whole life. They were 12 and 14. Um, and, and they said, yes. And so we let them design the trip and, uh, we put our house on the market and within 90 days, we were leaving our house for the last time we had picked out a motor home and I wrapped up, um, my obligations at my corporate job. And then we left. So, and we traveled for just about a year. Um, and we mainly traveled in the Western U S because everything they wanted to see was there except Niagara Falls. I still owe Gavin a trip to Niagara Falls. So <laughs> what a powerful story and example and testimony to all the stuff you talk about in the book, to your point about like, how can we be congruent with what we're teaching if we're not doing this stuff ourselves and then getting the buy-in of your kids, which I mean, it's hard to get buy-in from teenagers on anything, like mm -hmm. what they want to eat for breakfast, let alone do they <laughs> want to sell everything, leave all their friends and get in a motor home and drive to wherever. Um, so it, it's amazing that you, you made that happen. And then you mentioned how your daughter, you're talking about this idea of equine therapy and what to do with horses. And then mm -hmm. I don't remember if you talked about it specifically in the book, but I, I know uh, from being friends with you, it, for your son, one of the things he's really been interested in is aviation. Yes. That he is now pursuing or might already have his pilot's license, right? Yeah. He's in the middle of it. So he flies again. Well, at the time of this recording, it's August 9th. So he flies again next Monday. So yeah, he's in the middle. Um, he's done ground school and he's in, in the middle of all the flying lessons. I think they said between 40 and 45 hours of flying lessons, and then he can solo for a little bit, but he can't get his actual pilots, private pilots license until he's 18. So, and he turns 16 this week. So he has a little bit of time to get it all together. So amazing, right? When most kids are worried about like what kind of backpack they want for back to school, your kids are figuring out where to go do equine therapy and how to log their flight hours, which is, is just yeah. so cool. and so amazing. And so again, like I'm, I'm sharing all this because I want people to know you're just not like a lot of books that you read. You're like, I don't know, is the author really like that? Or like, where do they, to your point that maybe they have certifications or they have a bunch of degrees or whatever, or PhDs, which to some people, PhD stands for piled high and deep um, <laughs> <laughs> around uh, BS or maybe their belief systems, whatever, or however you want to define BS. But um, you know, it's like, okay, like or maybe you go to school and you're learning from a professor in college. You know, I, I had a professor who was teaching marketing and I remember asking the question, I probably didn't do it very um, eloquently or diplomatically on the first day, but I was like, it, this is entrepreneur class <laughs> marketing. And I was like, um, have you ever had a business or marketed a business? And they were like, basically, no, I've just been in a classroom teaching and mm -hmm. there's nothing against a classroom and right. teaching. I, I adore teachers, whatever, but there is something to be said for theory in the classroom or theory in the book mm -hmm. and actually doing it and be able to speak from real world experience, which I love because you have the scientific background and nursing background. And so you understand the psychology and the sociology around a lot of this stuff. So you have the formal training, but you also are actually doing it. So I want people to understand like, this is not just some pie in the sky theory thing, like, Hey, let's go get real and get clear and get results and get going. Yay. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's not Bethany cheerleading for you. It's look, I'm doing this and I've done this and I, I'm going to continue to do it. And I'm helping other people, your coaching clients and, mm -hmm. and other folks that, that, you know, read your blog, listen to your podcast. You're helping a lot of people do that. And, and so I think that's a good transition to get into the next and the, the last part of your book, which is get going, right? So you, you get some, uh, you get clear, you understand where you are, where you're trying to go, you get real and say, okay, there's a gap here. Let's analyze that gap and figure out what we need to do. But then you actually have to get going mm -hmm. and you have to get moving. And I think one of the most difficult things for people to wrestle is, is what you talk about in that first chapter of, of that section, uh, chapter 16, grow your self-trust. You know, that's, that's a deep, that's a deep subject because through most of the book, you talked about it and we've talked about it a little bit, but most people are just kind of going through life following the script that was given to them by somebody else. Mm -hmm. 
And then you get to this point of, okay, what's what I have is not working. I want to do something different or better. And then you have to lean on yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it a few times where, you know, somebody said to you, don't do a podcast or don't do a book, or you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And you like, you listen to them for a little bit, but not until you got clear about what it is and what you wanted to do, were you able to move forward? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to speak into that a little bit about getting going and and learning how to trust yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think for me in my journey and what I've seen in my clients journeys is surrounding yourself with people that have the attributes that you want, that are going to cheer you on and support you that are out to collaborate and not compete and people that you can borrow their belief. They can remind you of, of your greatness, of your awesomeness when you forget. And I think, you know, for my kids, I've, I've tried really hard to do that because, well, that's what I always wanted. Who doesn't want to have somebody believe in them so much? I know um, last year on Gavin's birthday, um, I woke him up and we drove to the airport where uh, I'd been talking behind the scenes with the flight instructors. And it's just a small airport that has a flight school attached. And he's like, what are we doing? And I'm like, well, don't get excited. We're not going up in a plane, but I just kind of wanted you to see what they do here. And so um, we brought him in and they gave him a tour and showed him uh, the planes they fly and and the the classroom. And then he was like, the guy was like, uh, his name's Gene. Gene said, what do you think, Gavin? And he's like, this is really neat. And he leaned down behind the counter and he's like, well, here's your pilot kit. We start in a few weeks. And I'll never forget that moment. And Gavin looked at me when we got in the car and we're leaving and he said, you believe in me? You yeah. believe that I can do this, mom? And I'll never forget that because yeah. isn't that what we all want? We all want to be surrounded by people that believe in us so hard that they help us see possibility. And that is my ultimate goal in, in this book is that you, when you walk away that you see possibility that you didn't see before. And you start seeking out those people in your life that are, you know, I think, I don't even know who says this, but possibilitarians, right? They're possibilitarians for you. And, you know, Dave, you've been one of those people for me. I mean, there, we've had several conversations when I've been stuck or I couldn't see possibility and just you asking me the right questions, open doors, both in my mind and otherwise that I didn't see before. And I think you're not going to ditch the dreams and the ideas you've been sold or taught to want if you surround yourself with people that are on that same wavelength. And it's not that those people are bad, but you, you've got to be intentional about the people and the energy that you allow in your circle. You, ju you just have to. And so I know for me in my journey, I started, I, I just sent emails to people that were in my community that I admired. There were like five people. I made a list and I was, I was scared. And I asked them if I could buy them coffee and I just, and I didn't want anything. I didn't ask them to mentor me. I didn't ask them for anything. I wanted to find out more about them. Um, I was very interested in who they were and I wanted to treat them and tell them, thank you for inspiring me. And all of those people said, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm still in touch with all of those people today. And they became part of my initial expansion circle. You know, what does your expansion circle look like? And, and you, you can't get going if you're surrounded by people that are continually, you know, pulling you down, not that they mean to, but I don't know if I'm making any sense, but it's like the crabs in the bucket thing, you know? <laughs> That's exactly the example that I was going to share with the crabs in the bucket. For people that don't know that, if you put one crab in a bucket, five gallon bucket with no lid on it, it will figure out how to get out. But if you put more than one in there, two or more, they will claw and rip, literally rip each other's claws off as they try to get out of the bucket. They'll just pull you back into the, pull them back into the bucket so they can't escape. And the same thing holds true. Like we've probably heard this said a million different ways. One of my favorites is how Jim Rohn said, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, we know from science and psychology and I've been geeking out on another podcast, Dr. Andrew Huberman in the Huberman lab. He's a yes. scientific guy. And he talks a lot about stuff around this, this area and dopamine and like how our brain works and all this stuff. And it's true. Like if the people were around in the, um, what you call them, your expansion circle, your expansion team, mm -hmm. uh, you got to get around people who are going places that you want to go to, or have been to the places you want to go to and can give you some help on that. If you, you know, I will often say, if you always ask for financial advice from your neighbor, they will always be your neighbor. Meaning mm, like, mm -hmm. if, if they're not doing anything to better themselves, they're not going to move up and out. And so if you're always relying on the people that are close to you for that kind of stuff, or, you know, I'll say a lot, uh, I'll say this a lot around why are you letting blind people proofread your vision, right? Like you, you want to do these big things but you're asking people that ha you have no business asking, like well, they don't have any credentials there. They don't have any right. experience there. They don't have anything, which we've talked a little bit about already. Like, are they, are they doing those things? Mm -hmm. And it's critical that people figure out how to do that. And it starts with eliminating the negative stuff, like watching the news. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not a lot you can do about the stuff that's happening on the news. I'm not saying don't educate yourself. Like, yeah, you need to have some stuff, but I would argue that if you're watching the news, you're actually getting, um, miseducated. Mm. You're not getting, you mm -hmm. know, told the things you probably need to really know about. And so you need to get smart about addition by subtraction, maybe get rid of some of that negative stuff that's really not helping you. And then how do you get around people that will are headed where you want to go? And in your case, you found people to get coffee with for a lot of people, they can go to the library and get some books. Absolutely. Some really smart people that are yeah. doing things, you know, and do that or listen to good podcasts mm -hmm. or listen, you know, whatever. You, you don't always, this doesn't always need to cost a lot of money and you don't always need to pay for coaching and, you know, all this high level mentorship. Now at some mm -hmm. point you're going to want to raise your game and up level. And yeah, you do want to get in that room, but to get started, it's as simple as like taking some small steps and then getting around the people that are going to help you get to where you want to go, which again, going back to your conversation about your daughter horses. Okay. So then how do we figure that out? And you just start talking to people about it and then your mm -hmm. neighbor, and then they know somebody and then pff, there you go. Right. Right. But that doesn't happen if you don't get clear, get real, and then like get going start taking some action, start taking some steps or asking people or doing some research or whatever. And a lot of times just in the process of doing that, it seems like, um, who is it? Thoreau. I always bastardize this, this quote, but you know, this, I, I think it was Thoreau who said something along the lines of like, when you step confidently in the direction of your dreams, it's like yes. the world conspires to, you know, assist you on that journey or, or to solve those problems or help mm -hmm. you figure out how, which is my paraphrase of it. But yeah, you gotta, you gotta get going. You gotta take action. You gotta, you gotta go there and take those steps. And so that's why I love when I was reading your book, I was like, oh, that's so clear. Like if nobody else, if they don't take anything else away from, from reading your book, it's just, just this idea of get clear, get real. And then you actually have to do something like get going, like mm -hmm. do anything, take a small step. I remember having a conversation with you a couple of years ago around, you know, you're like, I don't know how to do this thing online. I'm like, well, why don't you just do it? And you're like, but I don't really want to do that. And I said, well, <laughs> just, just do it. Right. And you're like, but I don't want to be known as that. Or I don't, that's not something I'm like, listen, you learn a lot, just do it. Right. Yeah. And, and you had some success with it. Mm -hmm. So and, and those little things, I think, right. This idea of like, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. So, right. you know, when, when you start taking these steps, they're not always going to be classified as wins. Maybe you're going to strike out. Maybe mm -hmm. it's, you're not going to get a base hit, not going to hit a home run, but you get up there and you get to see a few pitches and you know what it's like to stand at the plate and see live pitching. And then you get up there again and you keep swinging and doing that. Right. But you just got to get in the game. You got to take the swings, whatever metaphors or similes that you want to use you got to get going. And I love how you illustrate that throughout the book. It's, it's a really like, this is a, a textbook for people. And I don't mean that in like a boring, dry way, or right? like, <laughs> oh, this is a textbook. I mean, like, this is a textbook for getting results and it's not a super long read. I think mm -hmm. on a Kindle is like 160 pages or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's not that long. Yeah. So it's a relatively quick read, mm -hmm. um, stories in there to illustrate the point, but then lots of great action steps to get you to actually get going and start building the life that you desire. So I would encourage everybody to go pick up a copy of it. it's available on Amazon. I'll make sure wherever you're listening or watching this, it's in the show notes. Uh, so you can get it. And so before we close out our conversation today, Bethany, first of all, thank you for joining us. I thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah. I, I know that the information you shared today is definitely going to help people unleash their awesome. Uh, but is there any closing comments or asks of my audience or anything else you want to share before we go? Hmm. 
you know, I guess I would say as you're listening to this podcast, uh, there may be all kinds of things that are coming up for you and just be aware of the if onlys and the excuses and the things that you may be telling yourself about what is and what is not possible for you. Now, like Dave, I will never be a ballerina. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Um, it's not who I'm designed to be, but getting real about what it is that you really want and how you can make that happen is a game changer in your life. Because uh, I have a t-shirt uh, that says I'm doing it for my 100 year old self. And, you know, when you're 100, don't you want to look back and, and think I played full out. I left it out there. I, I did my best, maybe not every single moment of every day, but overall I did my best. And, uh, there's a, there's a popular reel and TikTok out right now that says, um, we're all going to die and no one's going to remember us anyway. So F it. <laughs> and, and I, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. You know, make your mark while you're here. There's a massive ripple effect to that. And, um, and I'll close with this. I heard someone say once that their definition of hell was getting to the end of their life and meeting the person that they could have become. And, and I think about that a lot. Um, I, I want to look back and know I was proof for myself, for my kids and for the people that I serve that I was able to live a fulfilled life, doing things that lit me up in ways that I never dreamed of. And if that appeals to you at all, I encourage you to connect with me somehow. If you don't buy the book, um, follow me on social media. I'd love to connect. There's all kinds of free resources out there too. So thank you, Dave, for having me. Appreciate you're you. welcome. And if you want to share where they can find you on Instagram or what you're absolutely is, yeah, feel free. So um, it's my name, Bethany Clemenson, C L E M E N S O N. Um, on Facebook, I'm at Speaker Bethany. Um, and my website is Bethany Clem, C L E M dot com. So awesome. I'll make sure all that stuff is in the show notes. And what a powerful way to end our conversation today, Bethany. Thank you. Again, her book is called Ditching the Dream How to Live Life on Your Terms. It's available on Amazon. That link will be in the show note for you as well. Bethany, thanks again for joining us because I know that our conversation today is definitely going to help people unleash their awesome on the world. See you. Thanks for listening to Unleash the Awesome. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag Unleash Awesome. <laughs>